Hello, welcome to Tech Talk. You know, that, 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 that little groove is an E. Okay, and another pretty single operator sound. Anyway, today we're going to talk about FMX, and fortunately today it isn't the temperature of the surface of Venus here where I live, where it has been for the last two days, three days. Last night I got very little sleep because I had a Labrador retriever that kept whining. So he slept in my, in my shower. It's so weird. Anyway, it's been very hot here, but it's not hot today, and I'm here to talk to you about FMX. So first off, let's take a look at, um, at my overhead shot here. Hopefully you can see this, right? Um, so, um, you know, we're going to focus on a few things. I wanted to point out um, a few kind of interesting things here. First of all is some of the things that make FMX so cool. Um, what is that little X in FM? What does that add to the FMX, um, to, to FM? Um, and then I'll just show you um, some very basic things. Um, and then the meat of this is to use some DX7 sounds and, 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 and show you how you can take these sounds that literally are from the 1980s and bring them into the Montage or Modi X. In this case, I have a Modi X in front of me today. Um, and, uh, and just um, show you what can be done with it. It's, it's really pretty powerful. A lot of it has to do with effects, for one thing. I'm going to show you some effects that I've added to it. Um, I'll show you also some very cool things um, just with, uh, you'll see. Anyway, first of all, let's start out with um, just uh, the init normal. So when you find init normal, I have it already in my live set here. But when I go to the category search here, um, there's a NOAA sign over here, and I don't want to look at user. I want to look at everything. You'll notice that there is init sounds right here. So I grabbed just this very first one, init normal FMX, and I saved it in my live set right here. So what does the init normal give you? Well, it gives you a single operator, and I'm gonna go into my edit here, and I'm gonna drop into part one, so you can see my, my, my um, the algorithm. The algorithm is algorithm one. So what algorithm one is, is um, a whole bunch of operators, eight of them, all of them as carriers. So that means they do make sound. Um, you know, I, I can't help but remember, I think the best um, description of the FM I've ever heard anybody from a very basic point of view um, was from Bad Mister, Phil Clendenin. He's the one that points this out. So you have carriers and modulators, right? What a carrier is, that's the one that makes the sound. The modulator, you never hear the modulator. The modulator is the thing that modulates the sound or changes the sound, affects the sound. And what he did as a great analogy is, think of a violinist. When a violinist um, picks up the violin and just puts their finger on the fretboard and moves their hands like this, you know, do you hear anything? No, you don't, because the bow, this is my bow, my fake bow, is in this hand, right? This is a modulator. It's doing vibrato, but until you hear the carrier, which is the sound of the, of the bow going across the string, you won't hear anything. That's the carrier. This is the modulator. The vibrato is the modulator. So that's, that's how it works. That's, that's FM synthesis in a nutshell. Now, traditional FM synthesis only used sine waves. And um, the great John Chowning, you should check this out at yamahasynth.com in the FM 101. The very first article in the FM 101 is a great... Um, interview that Jerry Kowarski, when a great writer and, and you know, great guy from the industry, did an interview with him. And then I actually did an interview with John Chowning live a few years ago. And it was really interesting listening to him when he first heard FM. He, 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 he changed the frequency of the modulating um, sine wave. And he heard these, these sounds, these other sounds happening. They were sideband partials. They were upper harmonics that were happening. Um, and so that's the basics of FM. Now in this one, the, the, the sound I have right here, what I'm gonna do is I, I'm in part mode now. You see I'm in part edit. I'm just looking at operator one. Now I'll look at level here. The level of operator one in, in this init sound is at 99, so it's up. But the other one's nothing, right? So all you're hearing is a single operator. And currently the form, the spectral form that I have is just, just a sine wave. 
And, you know, everybody knows the sine wave, if you remember when there used to be this thing called the dial tone. And that's, that's basically what the dial tone sounded like, was this to a major third sine wave. What makes FM different than, or FMX different than the DX7 are these things right here called spectral forms. So spectral forms are actually, what a sine wave is, is a pure tone with no upper level harmonics. What these spectral tones do, or spectral forms do, is that they add different upper level harmonics. So if I go to all one, I have now still a sine wave, but I have this thing called skirt. And what the skirt does is it opens up the harmonics. And you'll hear that happen when I just move this sound here. So that's a single operator, but now it's not just a sine wave anymore. It's not just the fundamental. So that's, that's one of the things that FMX adds are these different spectral forms in here. Now, something else that FMX adds and what Montage and Modi X do is they give you control over FM. If you remember the original DX7, which I remember I bought mine in 1985, I think. I think that's when I got my first DX7. I remember it's totally being blown away. What blew me away about the DX7? Well, it was the fact that it was expressive, that when I played loud, it got loud. When I played soft, it did, you know, and no other synth. I had other synthesizers before that, but they didn't have velocity sensitivity. Or if they did have velocity sensitivity, they only had velocity sensitivity to trigger maybe a filter, which is something that's cool. But the DX7 did something far more than just get louder. It also changed timbre. It was truly an expressive, amazing instrument. So I totally remember what it was like playing that instrument. Um, so fast forward now. These were all done with sine waves, right? But one thing that DX7 didn't have is control. It was membrane switches, a data slider, the end. You did have pitch bend and modulation, but being able to control any of the FM parameters, you couldn't do that. Now with FMX, you can. So check this out. Right here, I can just assign, see where it says control assign? If I select skirt and I see that control assign light, right up, light up, that means I can assign it to any controller. So I can touch control assign, I'll just put it to the super knob here. So now, now I'm gonna change my, uh, my, my, uh, my uh, control here. So now I'm just adjusting the skirt of a single operator lot, but that's one of the parameters that you can assign. There are so many parameters. It, what makes this instrument so cool is all of the motion control. That's what motion control is. It is being able to have lots of really deep dynamic control of the synth engine, of the effects, and so on. Anyway, so single operator, that's the difference. You have all those different spectral forms in there. You can experiment with just, just, uh, just this first one here. In fact, let me show you real quick. Um, we did this in the first season of Tech Talk. Um, I like to point this one out in the, it's uh, issue 3, 2016, one of the very first um, music production guides that Hans-Peter Hinkle put together and uh, the other guy that helps him with it at Easy Music, I'm spacing that out right now, but that has an excellent basic FM Basics article. It's issue 3, 2016, something like that. You can get it in the, you'll see it at the end, I'll show you where to look, it's, um, it's actually, it's in the comments on the YouTube video where you can get these music production guides. But I highly recommend checking that one out because it has a very cool basics FM. And one of the things that he shows is a very, very basic drawbar organ setup where he gives you the, 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 the different, um, um, the different uh, frequencies that you set the operators to emulate a drawbar organ. So check it out. I already have this set up in here. I'm going to go into my drawbar organ here, select... Um, my part that I have here, and you see it right there, yes. Let's go here, get away from the control. Sorry, I'm just gonna go to my operator. Um, and I have them all right here. You have your level control part, right? Individual parts or individual elements or operators. So I need this to control my, 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 my um, the, the, the level of, of, my, of my operators. So here's operator one. And where that is set, the frequency, he gives you the actual frequencies to put in here. So operator two is set at, the ratio is 1.50, of course one right here. So now you hear this. And then three, operator three, I'll just do the first three here. 
Sounds like an organ, doesn't it? So another, these are, again, there's no FM really happening here. These are all carriers, right? The last thing I want to show you is to make something as simple as this. These are all just sine waves. To make it kind of interesting, I'll go here to edit. I'll go here to my part again, and I'll drop into common effect, and let's see what we can find here. On, we'll go to tremolo rotary, rotary speaker two, right? So now adding just a rotary speaker effect. This is something you couldn't do with the DX7 because there were no effects in the DX7. This has two insertion effects, a variation effect, a reverb effect, a master effect, so lots of effects. But again, the thing that's cool about this instrument is the control. So if I want to change the rotary speaker control, control assign, let's assign it to the mod wheel. That's literally just taking algorithm one, essentially just that init and just and it's a decent decent organ sound right you know basic that's the basics let's move on okay this is so e piano one this is the dx7 e piano one sound from the DX7, six operator. Um, this was converted using FM Converter. You wanna check out FM Converter? Go to yamahasynth.com under apps, you'll find the FM Converter. You'll convert sounds from the DX7, the DX7 II, the TX802, the TX216 and 816. I think I got them all that it supports, but you can literally take a, 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 a group of sounds from a DX7, drop it in an FM Converter, convert it, and it creates, it spits out a, a montage um, library just like that, so you can get all the DX7 sounds. If you have a DX7 and you have lots and lots of sounds, you can convert it and load it directly into a montage or a Mode EX. So that's what I did here, or that's what somebody did. I think I just... So one thing I wanna show you here is, let's take a look. How FM Converter works is, 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 is pretty fascinating, actually. Um, in this case, I want part one, and these are all single parts so far that I'm showing here. And we're gonna go to... Um, part settings algorithm. So this is the algorithm that it's using. This is algorithm 13. Now, when you bring over these sounds from the DX7, um, operators one and two, because, let me explain this. This DX7 was a six operator FM synthesizer. Well, this is an eight operator FM synthesizer. So what about those other two operators? Well, it brings those in, but it sets them always in um, operator one and two, and the level are off. So they're and they set and they're set as two carriers. This is pretty cool because you can add some some interesting sounds to it with those other two operators. But I'm not going to do that yet. But I do want to show you something here, just to get an idea. Look, I just turned my front panel into the DX7. Um, so this was again converted from the EPN01 sound, and you can see on the front panel of the DX7, it had all of the 32 algorithms. This has 88 algorithms, so there's more, more operators, more algorithms. But you see that it was algorithm five, one, two, three, four, five, that did that, that classic DX7 sound. So when it brought it over, now it's hard to see, it was, uh, it's the best image I could get, but the feedback loop, or the, the, the portion of the operator that feeds the output of, of the operator back into itself to add more harmonics and more interesting stuff to it. The feedback loop in this case was over, I think, on operator five. In this one, it's operator three. So it's almost like a mirror image, but it functionally works identical, and it brings it in. One thing I will say, too, when you convert something from a DX7 to Montage or Mode EX, be prepared because this, it's, it's much, much more, it can be much louder in the, montage in Modi X because of the higher fidelity. Just be careful. It can be super loud when you bring it in. So just, just uh, you know, we're talking a mono 12-bit 1980 synthesizer versus a 24-bit modern. Yeah. Anyway, just just a little warning. Um, so here you go. So I'm going to move it away from here. So that, that's, how, that's how it converted it. And let's do something to this sound. Well, first of all, it's so easy just to turn on an effect. And I have this already, just put a chorus on it. So two effects here. Another thing I love about this instrument are some of the cool effects in here. And this is one of the sounds that I just love playing around with is the slicer. 
And the reason why is because it synchronizes to tempo here. So something that we added in OS 2.0 I guess, and then we made it better in 2.52 is where we're at, is now that I have this in here, I love the fact that I have a pattern sequencer. So as soon as I have a sound that I think is cool like this, I can go right into a pattern sequencer, set it right here and go. You know, if I wanted to add a drum groove, it's just as simple as adding a part right here while I'm still in record. Things like that I love about this instrument, which you couldn't really do with the DX7. DX7 was a synthesizer. This is also a synthesizer, but now that we have some recording on board, add some stuff, really do some amazing stuff, I think. I want to show you another thing in here, too, that I just want to point out. Um, so you remember the TX816, we'll go back to my just my sound here. The TX-816 was basically eight DX-7s in a row. Well, you, you in, in, a, in a rack mount unit, eight of them. And you could do really amazing things by putting basically the same sound and then detuning each one of them. So you had eight DX-7s, a little detune, massive electric piano sounds. This was an amazing rack mount, eight DX-7s in a rack. It was like four grand when it was new. It was something I really wanted but couldn't afford because I was young. But here's what you can do. I'll just do very quickly when I'm in this in this area here, and I hold shift, and I touch edit. You see where I have part copy? Well, what you can do is I can take that 1DX7 sound, that e-piano sound, and copy that into another part. Again, shift, edit, copy one to three, right? And I could do it eight times. You can see each time I do this, it's adding another, another um, part, right? So now I have four parts in here. So you can do a basic kind of a TX7 sort of a jam here by going edit and then go over here to part two maybe. And um, real basics, uh, FM basics, right? FMX. Um, go over here, let me see, to part two, common. And um, what I wish to do is just very basically just detune each of my parts, once you get to where you need to go, by just a little bit. Um, we'll do part select on this one, three. Maybe change this one to that way, maybe. Part select, four. So now I've just detuned my DX. This is what I would do. Now you notice there's a lot of output now because it's summing, so I would probably bring these down a little bit. Again, you have your sliders over here to do that. Anyway, you get the idea. So, TX416. Um, let's do some something else here. I'm gonna grab, here's Brass 2. So Brass 2, Brass 2 from the original DX7, loaded in to my FM ecosystem I have in here. That's what I like to call the Montage and Modiax. They kind of are, aren't they? Um, I'm gonna select this part right here. Well, here, let me um, edit. Get ahead of my thoughts too much. So in this case, what I like to show with this, now a DX7, how it did filtering type effects was it used the modulator to simulate what a resonant filter does, right? So it didn't have filters on board. Now, this has filters for days. This has 18 filter types that you can choose from just on board, but it also has a new VCM um, filter that uses um, that uses VCM technology, and it's just the VCM filter, uh, and it is an effect. So I need to go to effect, and I already have it set here. So I'm going to turn it on, and I think I've already. Let me see where I put the control of this. Oh, it's here. That's right. So. I have filter cutoff and resonance. Let me go to my control page. I've already set this up to do this here. But you see that I have insert a cutoff frequency. Now the thing that's kind of cool about this is that this is very much like an analog filter. So if I bring the resonance up, I can get it to self oscillate like that. Maybe I don't want it that much. Thank <laughs> you. 
So it takes that brass sound. Now I almost have a bass sound. I might want to make that into a monophonic sound. The other thing is if I go to part settings and I go to pitch filter and I go to filter type, I can add one of the 18 filters on top of that. Some of those filters, if you, in case you haven't checked them out, I highly recommend you do because there's some in here like this dual low pass filter that gives you two different resonant peaks. So if I turn the resonance up, you can see it going there. And I'll move the cutoff frequency down, and I'll affect the distance. Now watch what happens in the screen. See? Two filters. Two filter sweeps in here. And then I have the filter control right here that are dedicated to that filter. So, so you can kind of double filter things. I got the VCM filter over here. I got the built-in filter, or the onboard filtering right here, a dual filter. It's part of the reason why you can get pretty analog, convincing analog sounds out of an FM engine. That's just me throwing together something really fast, too. One of the best sounds to show that that I love is just this, this CSO graph. So this is this is one of the preset sounds of the of the um, of the montage and Modi X, but it's all FMX. It's got really beautiful filtering on it. And the super knob, in this case, changes it over to almost like a pulse wave or a square wave, so it's a different... Here, I'll, that's so fat in my ears. Again, all FM, that's what you can do with FM synthesis and the onboard filters on this amazing instrument, you know? You dig? Check this out. So this is a tubular bells. Here's a little story for you. The carillon at the school that I went to college, it um, it died. It was a real carillon, you know, it had real bells, and it was very expensive to fix it. So what they did, and this is the 80s, they actually bought an FM synthesizer. I believe it was an FB01, so a four-operator FM synthesizer, and they set it up, and so people would hear the, uh, you know, the, the, the bell... Right, and it was, it was an FM synthesizer. Still sounded like a bell. So this is one of the FM synthesis. Plus, that's a very Top Gun. The beginning, or, or so. Or what else is in the sound? Sound that had a tubular bell at the beginning. Isn't tubular bell a little bit in front of beat it there a second? There's like a little. It's kind of mixed in there. Anyway, so very famous sound. Now let's destroy this sound um, using an effect and make it cool. So what I did was I have a thing called the wave folder here. And I have already set the wave folder to be controlled by the super knob. Let's look at what the control I have. See where you have auto select right here. I move the super knob. I've just set it to the fold. Now something that I think is really slick about the wave folder. So what the wave folder is, it basically takes a sound and as it gets to the top and it clips the sound, the actual sound of the clip, those frequencies are folded back into the waveform to make this really interesting. It, to make that sound, which is a digital distortier sound. It's so cool though. Add delay to that and I have a tempo cross delay in here. Okay, but what I want to show before I get to that co tempo cross delay is right here. They put a little sequence, a little sequencer in this effect. They being our really smart engineers in Japan. They didn't just give you a wave folder, they gave you a little sequence thing that syncs to tempo that I can make it, you know, one time faster or I can make it slower. But you add that to something like a tempo delay. Oh. Okay, so I have a tune, don't I? Hit record, key on start. It's a little off there in my tempo. But you get the idea. These synchronized delay things. The synchronized um, use of, of that wave folder effect. Is this not cool? These are DX7 sounds, folks. I mean, 
every time I spend any time with Montage or Modi X, I'm blown away by what what's happening here. What you get with this instrument is just it's it's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. It's synth lead one. <laughs> Check this out. Check this out. I'm gonna do something here. Cool. So I'm gonna go over here to part one. And in this case, this is synth lead. What was I gonna do with synth lead one? I believe what I was gonna do is I was gonna go down to modulation control and take a look at this thing right here. This is the, I believe the extended LFO was added in OS 2.0 on this instrument, 3.0 on Montage. But the extended LFO is sort of like an oxymoron, I guess you could say it. It's like jumbo shrimp because LFO is low frequency oscillator, right? So it, the idea is that the LFO will modulate something and do things like vibrato. Vibrato is, is slower than usually 20 cycles per second, which is as low as you can hear, right? So, right? You're, it's so very slow, low frequency oscillator. It modulates things using a low frequency that's below the range of human hearing. But what if you took an LFO and you sped it up you went, and it got in and, and it was still modulating, but it was modulating in the... So what you get is this. Right? Hold on. Okay, so what I have here is I have the speed right here, and I need to put the depth here, and then each of these are operators. I don't have any of them pointing at operators one and two, because again, this was brought in from the DX7. Those are not part of this right now. They could be, you know? I could always add to add more sound, but what I want to do here is maybe add some control to this this uh, low frequency oscillator in here. So here I go. I'm going to go in here and I'm going to use uh, maybe the assignable knobs here. The thing that's beautiful, by the way, that you should really think about here, this is a heavy concept. When you bring in these um, DX7 sounds, they don't have any control at all. They are literally, D and that's a good thing. It's a good thing because when you edit a sound in a montage or Modi X, and you try to change things. Sometimes you realize that when you bring in um, when you bring in a, uh, a, uh, a a a a sound into an already baked performance, that there's control and you can't figure out how to get rid of like reverb. Like you turn the reverb send down, but the reverb send still is not there. Why doesn't the reverb go away? I turn the send all the way down. It's because it's assigned to the super knob already. So when you brought it into this already built house, it's gonna inherit some of the things that are controlling it. So what I tell people all the time, when you wanna edit things, get rid of all of the control on a part so that it's not being affected by the super knob so that you can affect it and you can change it. Anyway, you don't have to worry about that with these sounds. You can set things up how you want it. Nothing's been assigned, so check this out. I'm going to assign the modulation right here, see where it says control assign, to this assignable, just a single knob right here, all right? Okay, so I was just literally assigning that knob. Let me go back here to uh, the second LFO. I assigned the depth of the pitch modulation to this knob. I'm going to assign the depth of, see, right there, let's control assign, to knob two, right? So now I have that in here. Now I'm going to go to the second LFO, and I want to assign the speed of the LFO right here to knob three. So now this is going to be, you know, and I may have to change some things as far as how this response curve, listen to it, see what you think, you can change it, it's pretty cool, check this out. So what I wanna do here, second LFO. Speed. Now if you are a synth tweak person, you realize how cool this is. That's just a unique sound. That, I mean, <laughs> with the DX7 sound, just with the that second LFO. I mean... I, I'm running out of time. I already see it, but this is this is what I'm talking about. This is what everything you've heard is FMX, and basically everything you heard was from a DX7 that we converted and we brought it to the year 2021. It's 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 awesome.
Is it not awesome? I think it's awesome. Um, I do want to show one other thing real fast. The marimba sound. I do have one more sound, and then I'm gonna, then I'm gonna, then I'm gonna leave you to your day. And I know I'm having some weird connection issues today. Sorry about that. I know you can hear me. Um, I'm not sure why. It could be some internet things. It was like again, it was very, very hot here. There could be some. Who knows what's happening? But. I know you can hear me because I see people watching. So check this out. This here is just the marimba sound from the DX7, right? Edit, part, one, go. And this is just effects here. One is the ring modulator effect. Two, and I've already obviously assigned control, kind of like the cooking show, we already baked this thing. I just need to turn it on, take it out of the oven to show you it was it only took a minute to cook this souffle. So that's a bit crusher, a ring modulator, and the last thing, I just have a single ARP that I added. The ARP is added under arpeggio, individual, it's just this one, the chill MA ambient one. But check out what this does. DX7 marimba sound, by the way. I'm going to turn it all the way down. It kind of pulls it out and then just takes it to... I can totally see how that could be totally usable in, you know, again, if I'm here, I hit record, I'm in the pattern area, and with a, with a just as a side note, turn off the loop when you record an arpeggio key on start, and you always get a good. I'm gonna be humming this all day. That could be the beginning of a groove of something. Come on, creativity. Okay, I love this thing. It's official. I think that's good for today. I, you know, I had some other ones I was going to show, but I'm just going to move on and tell you about some other things. Oh, look, it's me big. I wonder if I am, am I, am I still weird and latent? If I am, I apologize. The internet is a thing. It is live. It is live, live. That's part of it. Um, hey, look at our web resources. Yamaha Synth. Everything that's Yamaha Synth, we have up on Yamaha Synth. Do you want to know about synth programming? Just go to learn at Yamaha Synth, and over on the right, you'll see a list of things. Touch synth programming, you'll find lots of synth programming things. Like, for example, Manny Fernandez's FM ex expert. FM, I think FM expert is one of Manny Fernandez's very cool um, articles that he's done. He is a master FM programmer. Another master FM programmer, Howard Massey's FM 101. That includes a great interview with John Chowning. The, you can find all of this stuff up on Yamaha Synth. I want to shout out a few of the people out there that are that are just uh, uh, influencers, end users, whatever you want to call them. There's Mad Fame. He's up on YouTube. Really great DX7 programming tutorials where he's got an overhead camera and he programs DX7. We have that in our synth bit section on Yamaha Synth. We repost it up there. Another one is um, uh, Tobias Leo, uh, Swedish, I believe, programmer who does an FM basics series, four videos. Great, really, really great videos. Lots of resources on FM programming at yamahasynth.com. Ideascale, if you have any ideas for a product, please go up to Ideascale and put your idea up there. We do listen. In fact, we have a new OS update that is for the CP that specifically comes from someone that we listen to, that we change something in that OS update. So we do definitely evaluate what happens on idea scale. And we make sure that our engineers get to see good ideas. So please, if you have any ideas to help our products, to, to make better products, what do you want to see? Go to idea scale. Links are all in the description, by the way. Sound Mondo. I'm going to upload some of these sounds to Sound Mondo, I think, because they have some stuff already in here. I might do some changes here. Sound Mondo is our free social sound sharing site that is free. Free social sound sharing site. Um, use the Google Chrome browser to get to it because it uses a very specific API to negotiate a driverless. Essentially, you hook the USB up, it sees your keyboard, you're good to go. Um, 
and you can also use it on an iOS device, the iPad Pro, the iPad, the iPad Air, the iPhone, anything on SoundMondo using the SoundMondo app. SoundCloud is where we have all of our, we have cool audio files, demos done by different artists. We have lots of podcasts. I think we're on podcast episode number 54 or something. Um, so uh, definitely check out SoundCloud to hear those podcasts behind the synth podcasts and audio files and things like that. Um, the music production guide. I referenced the issue 3, 2016. Gives you an idea on how far back those music production guys go. They actually go further back than that. I think they go clear back to 2009. So if you're a Motif XF user, you'll be able to see some cool things in the music production guide. The one I referenced today has a great FM Basics tutorial that I highly recommend. So there it is, the music production guide. You know, this week we didn't have any, any questions. There was one question in German. And I do have a few words I can speak in German, but not enough to really answer this person's question. I believe that Hoppe did. I, I, I saw his at the beginning, so. But anyway, but if you, hey, if you have one and you, and <laughs> it's in English, I only speak one language. Um, but please put a question up. There's the link to our question right there, yamaha.io slash tech talk questions to ask questions that I will try. If I have time to answer, I wouldn't live long today, but I would have, I would have answered your question. I answered one two weeks ago um, about drawbar organ settings. Marty, if you're watching, actually Marty got a hold of me. Marty's awesome. Anyway, I answered that question, um, and that's pretty much it for today. Hey, thank you so much. It's 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 uh, it's always a pleasure to be up here. Hopefully, I will um, check my interwebs things um, right now. I'm telling you, I think it's the heat. Yeah, but it's at least it's not like horrible. But thank you so much. Um, I lied last week. I didn't lie on purpose. But I said that uh, Nari Soul was the one that Dom did. It was Dom Segalis that was awesome too. That was on Smart Morph, right? You saw that. Check that out. Didn't cover Smart Morph because Dom kind of nailed that one. So, um, but the next tech talk is actually a behind the synth with Nick Semrad and Nari Soul. You definitely want to check that out. Man, these, those are two amazing musicians, and they're they're different, but they uh, they're just they're, and they're both awesome people. Please check it out next week um, on Tech Talk Live, the behind the synth edition. Um, and that's all I have for today. I definitely appreciate you watching. Have a great rest of your day or evening, wherever you are. Thanks.